Hello everyone, welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host Yolanda and we are continuing our journey with the major arcana of tarot. And there are a few things I wanted to share with you before we begin today. Um, I did receive a couple of emails asking why tarot and my connection with it, why this has even come about. And so what I wanted to share with you is that this is just what I consider another tool of awakening. And while Reiki and meditation um, and even use of intuition have been my primary focus of practice, the tools that I have used to really help me expand into understanding who and what I am in new ways, there are other Things that I have studied throughout the years, um, including you know tarot and astrology and some other um, modalities, but there are certain things that I have practiced, such, such as tarot, um, that are just like additional tools uh, that I have found for helping me and my process of unlayering and going going deeper into my cycle of. Uh, understanding and healing and transformation and all of these beautiful things that are a huge component of this journey of spiritual awakening. Now, one of the things I will say with all of these tools, no matter what it is, whether it's meditation, Reiki, astrology, tarot, on and on, we have various ways of using these tools. And that's what's really key, how we use them. And what I have come to realize is that we have a choice of using these tools in an externalized way. And we also have an opportunity to use them in a very internalized way. So for example, Reiki, in an externalized way, we can use that technique or the tools of that technique to work on other people, to help other people balance their energies and, you know, other things that people use those techniques for. But in a very internalized way, the practice of Reiki and the tools um, that you learn in that can also help you discover your own true nature. Then we have something like this, like tarot, again, can be used in a very externalized way, can be used as a tool of divination to do readings for other people, but in an internalized way, we can take this fool's journey like we are doing here on Reiki Radio and looking at the cards to understand our own journey, to understand our own consciousness, to understand who and what we are and support ourselves in our own processes of self-observation, unlayering, transformation. So this journey is really another uh, way of using these tools for introspection and again as a tool of awakening. So today we are going to journey into the emperor, who is the counterpart or the partner or the consort of the empress. And I have to tell you, yesterday with the empress, um, it was interesting. I just happened to uh, work on a client yesterday who was pregnant. And of course, the empress card, uh, the energy of that card came to mind and at the forefront But another thing about the Empress is that energy yesterday really had me focused on my own efforts and my um, what I am nurturing and pouring energy into. And I mentioned to you that the first three cards reminded me of as above. And so with the Empress, the Emperor and tomorrow's card, it reminds me of so below. So anyway, you can read some more about my journey with the Empress yesterday on my website. Go to my blog and that will be up later today. But today we're moving into this energy of the Emperor, which is the energy of authority. And just like the Empress was like the mother energy, the 
emperor is more like a father energy, but it also represents government. And so one of the things I would ask us to all consider today is how you are govern governing your own life. How do you govern yourself? How are you taking authority or being in authority in your own life? And are you leading yourself in the highest and best ways for you? Now, as we've been looking at the numbers on the cards, uh, the emperor is the number four. And the first thing that stands out to me with the number four is stability. In the system of numerology, the number four is all about stability. And if you look at the number four and you turn it upside down, it kind of looks like a chair, like the four legs of a chair. So again, it speaks to that energy of stabilization. But it also came to mind the energy of the four directions, the energy of the four seasons. And again, like we've been looking at through the tarot, the energy of the four elements um, that are represented in the four suits that we have discussed. But we've also looked at the uh, connection with each card with the element and the associated planet. So the element associated with the emperor is fire. And if you remember, the energy of fire is represented in this deck by the wand, which is also our will. So this card has a lot to do with your will. And the planet associated with this card is Mars. And Mars is the god of war. So when we look at the element and the planet, we get that this is um, also the energy of the sign Aries, which is very significant because we are currently in the energy of Aries. The sun is in Aries right now. So this is... Um, uh, a beautiful time for all of us really to connect with that energy and consider again how we are leading ourselves if we are being leaders of ourselves in our lives. Now one of the first things that stands out to me about the emperor um, is his white beard. And I guess because it's kind of like a contrast to all of the other colors in the card. And that represents wisdom. And, you know, when we think about being an authority in our own lives, we really want to access our, our wisdom. And sometimes we do that by... Um, learning from our past mistakes or learning from, and not even necessarily necessarily a mistake, but what we have learned before, how can we use that? Any challenges or obstacles that we overcame before, how can we use that to benefit us now and moving forward instead of using it as a, a, a reason that we are not succeeding in the way that we want to right now. So, you know, sometimes we get caught in our stories of like, oh, this never works or, oh, I always experience whatever it may be. Those stories from the past where we go with always or never that keep us stuck in a pattern. Well, that's using the past as an excuse, as a limitation, and as I say that, it reminds me of those rocks in the background of this card. I mean, they're very dry. They're um, uh, very, like, mm, they look like difficult challenge or like an obstacle. And the, as we know, like, you know, the obstacles most often are just created in the mind. Whereas if we can learn from our experience and review our challenges and see them as an opportunity to do something differently, to try a new tactic, to go a new way, we can then overcome whatever was a challenge before. 
And again, this speaks to that energy of Mars, the god of war. You know, we have to be strategic. And again, coming back to his white beard, tapping into our inner wisdom. What have you learned? What maybe didn't work for you in the past that you can actually learn from instead of just seeing it as something that is continuing to hold you back? Instead of an excuse, how can you find solution? Now, we look at this card, just like the Empress, um, I told you that the Empress was like the Earth Mother, or, you know, we had the Magician and the High Priestess, which were that feminine and masculine energy, Um, that are of uh, like a higher consciousness or non-physical. And then we have this now, the Empress and the Emperor, who are um, the physical manifestation of the divine feminine and masculine or that mother-father energy. Now, when we look at the magician and the emperor in comparison, because they're both that masculine energy, the magician was about self-mastery, but it was more internalized. Remember, because that was how you are using the power of the mind. Whereas today with the emperor, we are looking at self-mastery in an externalized way. How are you working with your will? How are you directing your will? What kind of action are you taking? So the Empress yesterday, we were looking at what we are nurturing. But today with the Emperor, I want you to consider what are you doing about it? If you were really looking at what you have created thus far yesterday with the Empress... And taking note of um, how your mind, how your whatever you're pouring energy into is playing a part in what you are creating and manifesting. Today is where we consider, well, what are we going to do about it? Are we directing our energy into things that are supporting us? Or are we pouring our energy into things that have been holding us back? And if we have been pouring our energy into things that have been limiting us or coming from a space of fear, of doubt, or worry, well, today we have this energy of the God of war to help us overcome our own limitations, obstacles, challenges. You know, yesterday also recommended that you use your sensory paying attention to again like what you see in nature what you see around you um, what you hear what you feel really tuning into our physical sensory and today I would invite you with the emperor to see things with even more clarity beyond the surface Because a lot of times we may look at things around us at a surface level and say, ah, it just is what it is. But today, go deeper for understanding. What do you actually see in your life? Don't be afraid to really analyze and go deeper for understanding. Okay, so let's look at the emperor, um, the symbolism and the um, picture itself, the card itself. Now, one of the things that stands out is the scepter that he's holding in his right hand. And, you know, the right side is considered the um, masculine energy, which is like action. Again, we're looking at will. But what he is holding is the scepter that looks like an ankh. And the Ankh is from Egyptian culture, and it is a symbol of eternal life. It is also said to represent the tree of life, and it's also like a key. But if you look at the Ankh, it's also very similar to the symbol of the sign, or I'm sorry, the planet Venus. And you remember yesterday, the empress, his consort, is 
the embodiment of the goddess Venus. Now think of this too. I told you that the Empress is represented by Venus and now here her counterpart is represented by Mars. That also speaks to that feminine and masculine quality. So now that we have both of them at play, it's about using those energies in unison, bringing them together so that we can um, find balance. Balance in emotion, what we feel, along with logic and the action that we take. So another thing in this card, um, you'll notice that the seat that he is sitting on has the uh, carvings of a ram head, which is also a symbol of Aries. And when you look at the ram head, um, one of the things that's coming up is also to consider today what you may be ramming against. What are you fighting against? Is there anything that you are pushing away, pushing against? What are you struggling with? Is there any internal battle that you are fighting? Is there anything going on in your external life, in your, the world around you, that you feel like you are fighting against? And if there is, how can you be more strategic? How can you fight smarter? Again, how can you lift up out of just maybe emotion or feeling and allow yourself to move into a higher perspective so that you can see with more clarity and become more strategic? Now, one of the big things with this is determination. Are you determined to do the work? You know, one of the things about this, um, and I've said on shows in the past, is that I truly believe it takes a strong soul to sign up and say, I am going to look at myself. I'm going to stand in front of the mirror and I'm going to work through my judgment. I'm going to work through my fear. I'm going to work through my old stories, my old limitations, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to love myself more deeply, to have understanding, more compassion for myself and all others. It's not easy. But if you are determined, it is a process that you can absolutely conquer get through and this energy of the emperor you know again we look at those rocks in the background no one said this was easy but if you see on the um, left side of the car well on his right side there is a stream of water again that stream of consciousness again that we saw behind the high priestess that was flowing down on the side of the empress. On the empress, it was flowing on the left side of her, which is the feminine. Now it's flowing down the right side of the emperor, which is the masculine. And that stream of consciousness here is symbolic of remembrance. Remembering again who and what you are and that you have the strength, you have the tools of the magician, you have the higher awareness of the high priestess. You have the power of creation from the empress to overcome any challenge, any obstacle that you may face. Again, not always easy, but doable. So under his robe, he has on this beautiful red robe, and the color red can be symbolic of life force, fire, passion. But underneath his robe, you can see from his arm and his feet that he is also wearing armor. 
So what are you passionate about and what are you willing to fight for? What matters to you? Again, looking at your determination, are you really determined to create change, to really understand yourself, to even go beyond, uh, this is coming up to share, going on beyond like the, um, uh, you know, a lot of times when we come into this path, I mentioned at the beginning, these tools of awakening, sometimes we can get kind of um, mesmerized by, you know, these things that are new, like the energy work and feeling energy and being able to transform energy. And all of a sudden our intuition kicks in and we begin to see, feel and sense in new ways. And we have all of these amazing experiences. And again, we can become kind of glamorized by it all. And it stays externalized. We want to use these things in an externalized way because we're fascinated by the experiences. But when we look at the emperor and seeing this uh, red, his passion, his fire, this life force and the armor underneath, we're reminded that this is about internal work as well. And that these tools, when you bring it in, It is tougher because now you're having to look at you. But again, you are armored. You are supplied with all that you need to do the real work. What even led you here? Why did you start this journey of seeking? Why did you start this process of transformation? What is that inner calling? Something motivated you to be here. Like for me, I've shared this story before. It started out as a journey of just wanting to overcome stress and anxiety. I just wanted clarity because of a huge change that was going on in my life. I had no intention of trying to wake up or transform or have this, you know, spiritual experience. But on some level, on a soul level, I knew that's what I was getting into. And as I started to realize that that's what this was about, I became more determined, more motivated to continue the process to fight for myself, to fight for my own awakening, to fight for my own sanity, my own clarity, to become the authority of my own mind the authority of my own emotion, the authority of my will, and taking complete responsibility for who I am being, how I am showing up, and the decisions that I am making. This is the energy of the emperor. Now, again, that sounds kind of easy, like, okay, just take responsibility for myself. No. Any of you doing this work knows that it can be tough. There are days where this is hard and you want to throw in the towel. But the beauty of this process of working through the major arcana is we started off with the tools, knowing that we have the resources available to us to navigate this this, um, physical uh, incarnation here in the material realm. It's interesting. um, (laughs) I received a text today from, uh, uh, this is off topic, but it just popped into mind. I received a text this morning from um, someone who started off as a student and client and now is very much like family. And um, she said, I've been listening to the podcast about the the tarot and it sounds like you are, um, your voice sounds different. Like you, it sounds like you're really um, in connection with your guides while you're doing this. And it's funny Because I just had a moment of that, like the stream of consciousness was coming through and I was like, whoa, where's this coming from? So anyway, uh, that was Michelle. She was a guest on the show and Michelle, you were right. So anyway, back to the card. Um, You know, this is really just about, you know, being more of an authority over your life and um, over your own will. 
So that is what the energy of the emperor is asking us to do today. Now, one of the simple questions you can keep coming back to as you journey through the day or something to even consider today is who or what is ruling your life. Now that may sound strange, but when you consider your motivation, you'll get the answer. Are you making choices in your life to appease others? Are you making decisions in your life out of fear? Are you acting to, you know, appease other people, fear, whatever it is, those are the things that are in rulership of your life if that is the energy you are acting from. That's what's governing your life. Now, that can be a hard pill to swallow, but to do this work, we have to be honest with ourselves and we have to look in the mirror and really go like, wow, okay, that's why I'm doing this particular thing. And oftentimes we feel called to do things that are more mm, resonant with us and we're not doing the very thing that we want to do in our life. Again, we have to ask why. What are we allowing to dictate the choice that we make? And if we're allowing something else or someone else to dictate that decision, are we being the authority in our lives? So again, just come back to, how do you govern yourself? Now, the emperor creates structure. It really balances the energy of the empress. And that's the beauty of us all being imbued with and created from the feminine and the masculine. Because there is balance in that, in the yin and the yang. And he is helping us to direct or focus what the empress is nurturing. So it's kind of like a balance of feeling and logic in your creation. So yesterday we were looking at what you are pouring energy into, what you are nurturing. And today we're looking at how does this impact our action, the choices that we're making. Now, if you look at the emperor card again, you can see he's holding a golden orb. And the orb that he's holding, um, some say it represents the, the world that he governs, being in governance of his world. And the color gold, again, is symbolic of alchemy. So when I look at this golden orb, I think about rulership over our own world, our own dominion through alchemy. Which again brings us back to those tools from our, our, um, our other counterparts, the priestess, the high priestess, and the magician. So again, what's your motivation and what are you doing about it? This is about discipline today. Being real with ourselves and having the discipline to say, you know what, I'm about to get serious about this work. I have the energy of the God of war. I have the tools that I need to overcome any challenges, obstacles, or old limitations. I have the strength and the ability to see myself and the love and the support of the Empress to love and be compassionate with myself through this process. We're using all of these energies that we have collected along the way. The openness and the, the um, what do you call it, like childlike wonderment of the fool. Having the openness to say, you know what, I can do this from a clean slate. No matter what I've done before, today I can make the choice to have a new experience and to do it differently. We can take that energy of the magician. I have the tools that I need to start to master my own nature. I have the energy of the high priestess to tap into my intuition for guidance, for support, to learn to trust myself more deeply. I have the nurturing energy of the empress to know that I am supported in what I choose to create and pour my energy into. 
And now I have the energy of the emperor to help me create structure and discipline to take action to support all of it. So today it's time to make some decisions. (laughs) And I can't wait to hear what comes up for all of you around the emperor, what comes up for you with this energy today. And tomorrow we will explore some of the possible influences around this as we go into the Hierophant. But just for today, let's focus on the energy of the Emperor. And as always, I will blog my experiences with this energy. Um, But I have to say over the next two days, my blogs may be a little late because I will be at um, a meditation retreat over the entire weekend. And so I will try to get it in, um, but the but I may be a little late on the blogs. But be sure to go to uchi.com. That's Y-E-W-C-H-I.com. You can join us in the Seeker Circle, share your experiences. I would love to meet you and to get to know you and hear your interpretations with all of this, as well as sign up for the newsletter so you can receive access to more tools of awakening. So that is all for today. Enjoy your journey with the emperor and remember to always journey in love.